everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at the Slayers, Vampires, and Demons from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Their origins, appearance, abilities, weaknesses, and more. I decided to do this show because I've always heard about it but I've never seen it and it won the poll that I put out by quite a bit. I also tried to do my best with the quality but the show is over 20 years old now so it does have that 90s look. Also, thank you guys so much for 30,000 subscribers. I really appreciate all the support you guys show the channel and all the suggestions and comments you leave. Honestly, I can't put into words how much I appreciate all the people that watch my videos and enjoy these movies as much as I do. If you want to watch Buffy or Angel, they're both available on Disney+, and Buffy's also available on Hulu. If you want to gain access to a whole new library of movies and protect your online data, today's sponsor NordVPN can help. NordVPN is easy to use and you can connect to servers in 60 countries with one click. Change your location to the Netherlands to watch all three Lord of the Rings and Hobbit films, as well as Van Helsing on Netflix. Or switch to Canada to watch 30 Days of Night. Or, if you're a gamer, you can change your location to play on different servers, protect yourself from DDoS attacks, and sometimes you can even find better deals. You can also run your connection through two VPNs if you want super security. A VPN will protect your data from being stolen by hackers and not even your internet provider can see what you're up to. Nord can be used on up to six devices, so you can install it on everything. Your Windows computer, Mac, iOS, and Android, so you can even change your location while using your mobile device. This comes in handy if you use a lot of public Wi-Fi because your data can be stolen over these connections very easily. Get an exclusive NordVPN deal by using my code KOGANLONS and save 72% on a two-year plan. Or you can click the link in the description or pinned comment and it will apply the code for you. And it's risk-free with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Thanks to NordVPN for being a sponsor on the channel, and now we can get back to the video. Buffy the Vampire Slayer was created by Joss Whedon, who has also created the show Angel, which is a spin-off of Buffy, and the show Firefly. He has also been a writer on many films such as The Avengers and Toy Story. Buffy the Vampire Slayer began with a movie in 1992. The movie wasn't a total flop at the box office, but it received mixed reviews from critics and fans. The film took a different direction than Joss Whedon wanted, so five years later he created the TV series which was much darker, critically acclaimed, and loved by fans. The TV series is a sequel to Whedon's original script for Buffy, which is why the show makes reference to some things that were not in the original movie. The show had seven seasons with 144 episodes and was continued with a comic book. Buffy also had a spin-off show starring Angel that had five seasons containing 110 episodes, so it almost went on as long as Buffy did. I want to explain the Slayer briefly before I talk about the vampires. First I'm going to read the Slayer prophecy. Into every generation there is a chosen one. One girl in all the world, she alone will wield the strength and skill to stand against the vampires, the demons, and the forces of darkness, to stop the spread of evil and swell of their numbers. She is the Slayer. Slayer is a special title given to a human female who has been chosen by fate. The female also has to be part of the Slayer line. They have special abilities and powers given to them by demons. Although Buffy is called the Vampire Slayer, Slayers are hunters of all evil, not just vampires. Slayers are referred to as the Slayer or the Chosen One. For thousands of years, there was only one Slayer at a time. That Slayer has to die in order for their abilities to be passed on to the next Slayer in line. There was one rare occurrence during the time of Buffy that caused multiple Slayers to become activated at the same time, but this was not permanent. The first Slayer was created by a group of tribal elders in ancient Africa. They were known as Shadow Men. They used powerful magic to infuse an ancient demon into a girl, Senea. This process granted her superhuman abilities such as super strength, speed, fast healing, and even some psychic abilities. She became the first Slayer. Slayers hunt vampires and any other evil or supernatural that threatens humans. Senea was not only the first, but the strongest of all Slayers. This was due to the fact that she directly merged with a demon. This also caused her to lose her humanity, and her only determination was to slay. Senea eventually died, but she can communicate with new Slayers through rituals and dreams. When one Slayer dies, their abilities are passed on to the next Potential. There is a number of girls called Potentials around the world that could become the next Slayer. This is called the Slayer Line. The Slayer Line is not genetic. They do not inherit the calling from their parents, and it cannot be passed on to children. The descendants of the Shadow Men went on to form the Watcher's Council. They are dedicated to finding and training the Slayers, as well as stopping demons and other creatures. They are basically like Q from James Bond or Carl from Van Housing. 
A watcher such as Giles aids the Slayer by providing them with any information they need, like what kind of demon they are dealing with, how to reverse a certain spell, etc. The Watchers must find a Slayer and train them as fast as possible because their job is so dangerous most Slayers don't live long, usually under a year. That's why it's very important to find potentials from a young age to train them in case they are the one chosen next by fate in the Slayer line. The Slayer has a special weapon, referred to as a Scythe. It is an ancient weapon designed for the Slayer, tapping into their powers. Whoever is the active Slayer at the time has the right to this weapon, although only four Slayers have owned it, including the first Slayer, Senea, and Buffy. The weapon was made by a powerful group of mystic women who are called the Guardians. This weapon was kept secret from the creators of the Slayer, the Shadow Men. There was a few rare cases of a Slayer actually becoming a vampire. This made them stronger than most vampires and Slayers, but also gave them all the weaknesses of a vampire. Only three Slayers have become permanent vampires, and Buffy became one temporarily. Now that you understand what the Slayer is, we can look at the vampires. I want to start with this quote from the show. Vampires are a paradox, demon in a human body, a hybrid, natural and unnatural. They walk in both worlds, but belong to neither. A vampire is a demon that has possessed a human corpse. Demons can only leave their dimension and come to Earth if they inhabit a human body. They are considered hybrids and generally looked down upon by other demon species. It kind of reminds me of Constantine how demons possessing humans are considered half-breeds and must possess a human to exist outside hell. Let's look at how the vampires were created. Before vampires, Earth was inhabited by the Old Ones, powerful, ancient demons. The Old Ones left their dimension and resided on Earth for a long time. However, eventually mortal creatures started to prosper and take the world for their own. The Old Ones either retreated back to their dimension or interbred with humans which weakened their powers over time. According to the Guardians, the last Old One that lived on this Earth was killed by the first Slayer, Senea, using the special Slayer weapon known as the Scythe. Here's a quote from Giles about vampires. The last demon to leave this reality fed off a human, mixed their blood. He was human form possessed, infected by the demon's soul. He bit another and another, and so they walked the earth, feeding, killing some, mixing their blood with others to make more of their kind. The old one that bit a human was named Malachar. Even though it's said he created the first vampire, another old one says vampires, or half-breeds as she calls them, existed before. It's possible she meant they have existed in other dimensions before, as there are two other known dimensions that are inhabited by demons and vampires. The old one Malachar was responsible for turning the first vampire on Earth, but it's other extra-dimensional demons that are responsible for the essence that would enter a human body and animate it. A demon lord named Archaeus is the one who inhabits the master's bloodline, and other demons are responsible for other bloodlines. When someone is turned into a vampire, they are no longer themselves. Giles states that a vampire isn't a person at all. It may have the movements, memories, even the personality of the person they took over, but it's still a demon at the core. There's no halfway. The demons that live inside vampires have similar intelligence to a predatory animal. They only gain the ability of speech and develop personalities after gaining the human's memories. All vampires are basically an evil version of their former selves. But some vampires do retain feelings towards special people. One person who was turned told his friend that he was only a shadow to him now, but still wanted a girl named Cordelia for himself after having a crush on her while alive. Another man named William is turned and he still loves his mother. So if your feelings for someone are strong enough, this can somehow carry over. Even though vampires have no soul, they can still experience limited human emotion. But this affection usually takes a twisted form, like obsession. When Angel went to the dimension of Pile, every time he took on his vampire form, he loses control of himself acting like a wild animal, similar to a zompire, which I will explain. A zompire is a vampire that is no longer inhabited by the essence of a demon. This can happen if the magic on Earth is cut off. The demon is what inherits the personality and memory, so when it's cut off from the body, it leads to the vampire becoming a violent, feral beast, like a zombie. They lose the ability to take their human form completely. They have a mouth full of fangs instead of just two, and were stronger than regular vampires. They could also enter homes without an invitation. Vampires exist on another dimension called Pile. Here they are referred to as Valtal, and in this dimension, demons are the dominant species and humans are treated as slaves and food. 
This place has twin suns like Tatooine, but vampires are not harmed by light here due to light having different properties. The vampires known as Val Tal can control their bloodlust extremely well, but make up for it when they do transform they become completely mindless and extremely bloodthirsty, more so than a regular vampire. If a vampire from Earth goes to Pile, their bloodlust and vampiric form changes to the same as the vampires that reside there. We can see this when Angel travels to Pile and when he takes his vampiric form, his skin appears much more like a lizard and he has multiple spikes coming out of his face. Unlike most hell dimensions, time in Pile does not flow faster than on Earth. A man became trapped in Pile for 5 years and when he returned, the same amount of time had passed on Earth. This is not always the case though. Angel was trapped in a different hell dimension and seemed to have only been gone for a few months, but when he returned, he said he had endured hundreds of years of torture. Hell dimensions are dimensions that have conditions better suited to demons. Earth was a hell dimension at one point until humans drove the old ones out. There's also heaven dimensions where ascended beings reside. Let's talk about how somebody is turned into a vampire. In order to turn someone, or sire them, a vampire must feed on a human, and when that human is close to death, they must drink blood from the vampire. If the human was not close enough to dying, they will not turn into a vampire. After the human consumes the vampire blood, if done correctly, the new sire will awaken the following night, although there has been some vampires that arise only a few hours after being turned. They do not need to be buried in order to turn, but some vampires bury their progeny as some kind of tradition. Vampires in the same sire line share a psychic link. While Angel was dreaming, he could see the actions of his progeny and seem to know their location. Watchers have speculated that this psychic link could be because vampires in the same bloodline share essence from the same demon. A vampire does not age, have a heartbeat, or need to breathe. They are also not susceptible to sickness and disease. Although vampires don't breathe, some have been seen being choked unconscious, but it's possible this was a lack of blood to the brain or just an oversight. They have the ability to appear human, but can change their appearance at will to appear much more demonic. It can also change involuntarily if they lose control. Once a vampire reaches a considerable age, they will begin losing more of their humanity and will lose the ability to appear as their human self. Their vampiric appearance will also grow more demonic. Angel is over 200, and Darla is over 400 years old, and they have not begun to lose their human appearance at all. The Master is the oldest vampire recorded and looks much more demonic than most. He does not possess a human face at all anymore. But he is still a half-breed demon, so at one time, he was human. It's unknown exactly how old he is, but presumably thousands of years at minimum. Of course, vampires must feed on blood. Animal blood will suffice if human blood is not available. Some vampires, such as Angel and Spike, purchase pig's blood instead because they don't like to feed on humans. The blood of supernatural beings can often provide added benefits like strength, etc. Vampires will not feed on blood of another demon, but it has happened a few times. Spike described demon blood as tasting like astringent and oaky. He did this to determine if someone had been possessed or not. If a human's blood is contaminated in some way with chemicals like steroids, it will taste bad to a vampire. A vampire said he fed on someone at Woodstock and spent six hours watching his hand, so any drugs a human consumes can also affect a vampire. However, they cannot be killed by lethal substances or poisoned. Vampires seem to prefer younger blood. A vampire commented that the blood of an elderly or middle-aged woman was not as good. Different vampires prefer biting different sides of the neck, as one vampire described herself as a right biter. I guess as opposed to a left biter. Most vampires only consume blood, but they are capable of eating regular food, and some do. They are said to have a human level of taste compared to their other heightened senses, which is why they usually consume blood instead. When vampires do decide to eat normal food, they usually prefer very strong tastes like spicy food, onion blossoms, and whiskey. These vampires cannot die of blood starvation like other shows and movies. They will suffer extreme fatigue and loss of their strength and abilities if they do not feed on blood for a prolonged period. Months of not feeding will cause brain damage and they will start to hallucinate and human blood is required to bring a vampire back from this state. Eventually, according to Spike, the vampire will lose weight until they are a living skeleton. Presumably, they could exist like this forever and could consume blood to bring them back to health. Similar to how the vampires in Underworld can go into a suspended animation if all their blood is drained. Vampires have great healing abilities, but they are not indestructible. 
An entire church organ fell on a vampire and it put him in a wheelchair for a few months, but it would have definitely killed a human. Injuries such as bruises and cuts from a fight fully heal in a few days. Some vampires such as Angel have much faster healing abilities than others. He was run over by a truck and beaten with a sledgehammer and returned to his feet well enough to fight only a few seconds later. Vampires of course have super senses, able to see in the dark. Some vampires eyes glow. They can smell and hear great distances making them very good at tracking. Some vampires like Spike seem to have a better sense of smell than other vampires. When a new vampire is turned, they gain combat skills even if they had no training. It's possible they learn their fighting skills from the demon that possesses them, as the creator of vampires, Malachar, created them to be his army against the mortals. Some vampires have unique abilities like precognition, able to see events right before they happen. Marcus the vampire torturer could somehow sense that Angel has a soul, and Dracula had the ability to transform into a wolf, bat, panther, swarm of bees, and mist. He said that he learned these special abilities through sheer willpower. He believed that he could do it, and so he could, although it did take him decades to master the art of shapeshifting. This means that possibly if their willpower is strong enough, any vampire could learn this ability and possibly some others. Some vampires can hypnotize or compel their victims, but only a few vampires are shown doing this, so it must be difficult. Vampires' abilities and physical strength grow with age. They have been shown able to punch a hole through another vampire and even flip cars. Vampire strength is also increased when they show their true face, or take on their vampire form. As I said before, superhuman blood can increase a vampire's strength. Blood from a slayer provided increased strength and also a euphoric feeling like a drug. Slayer blood is also the only way to cure a special poison called the killer of the dead. Vampires can move faster than a human can perceive, and to go with their super speed, they also have super reflexes. Some vampires are able to dodge bullets, and Angel was fast enough to spin around and catch a crossbow shot at his back. The shot reminded me of when Drake catches the arrow in Blade Trinity. Vampires can also jump high in the air. Angel was able to jump over a 10-foot gate, but they cannot outright fly. Let's talk about some of the weaknesses of these vampires. Vampires from Buffy are weak to sunlight, fire, being staked in the heart with a wooden object, and again decapitation. I've yet to find a supernatural that isn't weak to decapitation. To stake them through the heart, it must also be a wooden object. Metals and other materials will not kill them. If a vampire becomes completely engulfed in flames and burns up quickly enough, they will die, but older and stronger vampires will take longer to burn up. Fire is also kind of the same reason that vampires die from sunlight. The sunlight causes vampires to combust into flames and will be burned up. Unlike True Blood, where the older a vampire is, they become more susceptible to sunlight, Buffy is the opposite. New vampires will burst into flames almost instantly, but older vampires will be able to resist it for much longer. Direct sunlight will hurt vampires, but if filtered through heavy clothing or tinted windows, they will not burn. Holy items like crosses, bibles, and holy water will burn vampires on contact. Holy water can kill a vampire if it's ingested. It doesn't seem to matter what the cross is made out of, but when someone held up sticks in the shape of a cross, that didn't work the same way. It's speculated that the reason the cross works on vampires is because they fear it. A vampire was able to convince his pack to not be afraid of the cross, and then they were able to enter a church and kidnap some people. Garlic can be used as a vampire repellent and can be hung from windows or doors to keep vampires away although a vampire needs to be invited into a home to enter. Some vampires can use their psychic abilities in order to make someone invite them in. Invitation can also be written instead of said aloud. Once a vampire is invited into your home, they can come and go as they please, and the only way to retract the invitation is through a magical ritual. Whereas in a show like True Blood, they could simply say, I retract my invitation, and the vampire would be physically forced out of the house. Vampires in their clothing will appear invisible in mirrors, but they can be seen in photographs and video. Vampires did have reflections in certain dimensions such as Pile, because the dimension obeys different physics. Vampires can eliminate some of their weaknesses a few different ways. If a vampire wears the Gem of Amara, they are able to walk in the sunlight. There is a special ritual using mystical potions that allows a vampire to remove their heart and be invulnerable to death. But after about 6 hours, the vampire will instantly die, so it's not a permanent solution. 
A doctor once replaced a vampire's heart with a stronger artificial heart that made the vampire unable to be staked. But the doctor warned the vampire not to get his head cut off, so they're not completely indestructible. Angel became what vampires call the Host of Twilight. After becoming the chosen one for this prophecy, Angel gained increased strength, speed, as well as complete invulnerability to his weaknesses. He also gained the ability of full flight. When a vampire is killed, their bodies and clothing turn to dust in a few seconds. When a vampire is killed, they often call this dusting. It's possible to bring a vampire back to their undead state or even back to life after they've been dusted. When the master died, someone attempted to bring him back by using his skeleton and the blood of those who were present when he died. However, most vampires don't leave a skeleton behind when they are dusted, so it's possible only extremely old or special vampires could leave a skeleton. Spike died and was brought back as a ghost. An amulet ensured the survival of his spirit so that a spell could be used later to bring him back as a vampire. The blood of a Mora demon was able to turn Angel back into a human. The senior partners also had the magical ability to turn Angel into a human. This guy gets turned into a human and then back into a vampire a lot. The Seed of Wonder is a magical object that has the ability to bring people back to life as its guardian, shown when it brought the master back to be killed again. The last thing I wanted to talk about was how Angel was punished for murdering the favored daughter of the Kelderesh people. After Angel had killed the favored daughter of the Kelderesh people, they cursed him with the ritual of restoration. While still a vampire, this restored his soul, which in turn restored his consciousness and remorse. This is a quote from the father of the girl that he killed. You don't remember everything you've done for hundreds of years. In a moment you will. The face of everyone you have killed, our daughter's face. They will haunt you and you will know what true suffering is. After this ritual, he tried to feed on a woman but was unable to, burdened by his new conscience. Angel never fed on a human again because he couldn't bring himself to do it, because he felt so bad for the hundreds or possibly thousands of people that he had killed. Well that's it for my video on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I had never seen Buffy before making the poll that I put up, but I'm really glad that it won because I've enjoyed watching it and I'm currently still watching it right now. I really like the idea of vampires being demons residing in a human body, as well as the alternate hellscapes. If there's any other movies or TV shows you'd like me to cover, please let me know down in the comments as you guys always leave such good recommendations. If you enjoyed The Vampires of Buffy, leave a like and maybe consider subscribing if you haven't. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.